blazer uh, which I recently actually got off eBay um, I've got a Hoshi t-shirt on uh, Depop nice. and then I've got some All Saints basic jeans on which you can just about see and <laughs> um, so yeah we'll start with you introducing yourself like tell yes. me who you are and like what you do and all that kind of thing <laughs> well uh, my name is Daisy Clark um, I'm a stylist uh, at the moment I'm based in Kent I hope to be relocated to London very soon um, at the moment, I'm pretty much retail based, but I'm really looking to go into either freelance. Um, I really love working with secondhand clothing, so I really want to pursue it in that direction. Um, so yeah, that's, that's basically that's a bit about me. Just all about secondhand clothing, really. <laughs> yeah, I love your styling. I think it's really cool. I was like looking through your Instagram today, um, and like thinking of if there was any questions and stuff I had about it. But like, it just feels like it's very like effort like it's vintage but it's effortless like there's nothing in there that's like too it doesn't look too contrived or anything it's just very very well put together which i think is really cool and um, so is it depop that you do your main kind of searching on yeah so i do a lot on depop um i always find it quite sad when people don't sort of go via the second hand clothing route i i've been brought up with it my whole life you know when i was younger I go around the charity shops with my nan and then again going up through school I'd go around boot fairs with my mum so it's in my blood essentially um but I always find it a shame when people don't venture I think for me it was um a financial sort of reason as well you know I always find you within second hand shops you can get a lot more for your money um and I just find it not more exciting because you never know what you're going to get and I think Depop again is one of those things where is if you love shopping like I do and say so you can't get out to the shops then Depop is your main sort of um, go to at the moment with everything going on. Um, Vintage is another good one that I've recently started exploring. Um, so yeah, yeah, I love all the secondhand clothing and all that sort yeah. of. It's, yeah. it's a nice feeling as well, like especially now that you're kind of helping someone out, if you're buying from like a little, like someone off Depop or like an independent person and stuff, it's gonna, cause that's gonna change their week. Like I know when I sell stuff on Depop, it makes such a difference when someone just buys one top, I'm like, oh my God, I got an extra 20 quid. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas like putting that in like Peter Green's pocket, like he doesn't give a shit, does he? If you're, if you're exactly. buying that vest top. Yeah, it's definitely a good way to go. But um, I find you can find things that, I don't know, say uh, car boots might be a bit too far if you're just starting off in second hand, but um, you can find things in charge shops that um, might be from the 80s. Yeah, everything comes back. It swings and roundabouts fashion one minute things in one minute it's not you know it's like I saw you with your jelly sandals and I know that Alexa Chung's reinvented them and that's something that again I think we never would have thought might have come back because it was something that I wore when I was a child but that's what I love about it you can find you know your pair of jelly sandals in there or I don't know the awful 80s oversized puff blouse which everyone loves now and I absolutely love it so I think that's part of the fun of it for me is you never know what you're going to get as well yeah, definitely. Have you ever got rid of something and then rebought it? Because I did that with the jelly shoes. I got yeah. rid of mine and now I've rebought them. <laughs> definitely. Different. I think I've done that a few times. I think my main issue uh, is when I sort of say to myself, no, you don't need it. And then you go back and you're walking around and you think, do you know what, actually, that's only three quid, Daisy. Like, come on. And then you go back and it's gone. And I've done that so many times. I remember when I was living in London last year, there was um, a Gucci bag one. We don't know if it's authentic, um, <laughs> but there was a bag there. And I remember thinking, oh, no, should I get it? And then I just thought, you don't need it. You've got enough, you know, being, you know, all moral. And then um, I went back to get it and it was gone. And you just sort of sit there and you think, right, <laughs> from now on, if you see something that you like, get, get it. it there and then. <laughs> I had that happen to me with a, well, similar. I was in Shoreditch shopping in the vintage market and I picked up this scarf and it had um the Burberry label on it and I was like oh my god and it was in like this box with like five pound scarves so I took it over to this woman because like the woman that was on the stall wasn't there so I went over and I was like do you know whose stall this is like I want to buy this scarf and she pulled the scarf off me and then she saw the label and she was like oh no no you can't have this it's not for sale <laughs> and I was like Ugh. but I, I wasn't like 
I couldn't really pick a fight with her or anything no. like that. It was just really, and I just walked away. I was like, <gasps> so I, and to this day, I still think about it. I'm like, oh my God. And it felt amazing as well. Like the cash yeah. and, it, and stuff was really, really nice. I think it's going with your gut. Like that Gucci bag, I think in my heart, I was like, you know, it's worth the punt for like however much it was. I don't think it was labeled. I think that's why it put me off. So I was like, mm, they might just know what they've got here. Um, so I think that's why I didn't sort of, look into it but yeah it, it, it does haunt you yeah. my mum says it all the time to me we um we go to France every year and she's sort of into her knick-knacky bits so like the bit more antique um those kind of things and I'm the clothes um and she, there was this one time I remember we went and she said we go to this place in France where you have um a ticket as you go in and they write down all your bits as you go along essentially it's like um, a receipt before you've and that's what you pay with. Okay. Um, and I remember my mum, she was walking around, she's like, I don't know if I should get it. Go find your dad, like, we'll get his opinion on it. And then it was gone, like, five uh, minutes later. So, yeah, she yeah it'll it. haunt you. <laughs> does, um, you say you go to France every year, does that influence your style at all, do you reckon? Um, definitely. It's it's a funny one, because I grew up in southwest France, and where we lived over there, it was very agricultural, very rural. I think when people say, oh my god, you lived in France, like, ah, oh, très chic, huh? like, all this kind of stuff, like, oh my god, very Jane Birkin, like, it, I mean, it obviously wasn't, because when I was there, it was like the early 2000s, so it's very different. Um, so it wasn't really I wouldn't say that area is really the most fashion forward it would have been in Paris but we were southwest so again very agricultural um but I'm definitely inspired by me personally by I'd say it's more like the models of like the 60s and 70s so like the Jane Birkins and the Brigitte Bardot um and all those sort of icons definitely yeah, yeah. oh yeah I love it and like um yeah it's, it feels like very fashionable at the moment to be like well, maybe that's always been a thing. I don't know. Maybe mm. people have always kind of, um, is it glamorized or fantasized yeah. about like that idea of like this French style is very, um, is something that we definitely look up to over here, I think. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And um, so is your mum style, what's her like? Has your mum been into fashion and your dad and stuff? Like, where do you think you get it from? Um, I'd say... I'm not too sure as much with my mum, bless her, as much as I love her. Um, but my dad, definitely. My dad, um, oh God, he's got some great photos. When he was younger, he was like, I'm just, he was definitely a rebel. So again, he was with the vintage clothing. Um, and he had a mullet and he used to, I remember him saying to me, he always used to buy like two pairs of Converse so he could wear like one red foot and one white foot. Yeah. So I don't know, maybe, maybe it's something that's deterred from that. I'm not too sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I think yeah. you have to go through um, quite experimental fashion to like um, to kind of find out who you are and like to yeah. have good style. You have to have had bad style at some point or something like that. You have to have things. You have to learn from your mistakes. Definitely. I, I remember you saying. I think it was last week um, with your episode, and you said about the whole emo phase. Yeah. And I was like, oh, God, do I remember that? Unfortunately. And like, I had like, it was horrible. I remember my one of my friends at school. She had it was I. I don't even think it was a fashionable thing. It was just our weird thing. Um, layers and the layers were like this short on your hair, so they kind of spiked up a little bit. And then it was all straight. And I look at pictures now, and I just think, oh my god, Awful. why? <laughs> I had that haircut. I also <laughs> used to wear two studded belts, so I'd like loop one through, yeah, and then I'd wrap them both round, mm -hmm. and then like bandanas like anywhere we could put them like on your head <laughs> round your neck like round your wrist stuffed in your back pocket like that was cool <laughs> like crazy um, cool <laughs> yeah exactly cool <laughs> no I thought it was awful um so do you reckon your music has influenced your style as well so does it influence it now definitely I think um I've always been an old soul um if you don't know me a few years ago, I used to dress 1940s every day, used to pin curl my hair. So I definitely think history in general inspires me. And again, within the culture is the is the fashion and the, the music and the film and all that sort of side of it. Um, definitely, I would have said as, again, I'm always changing. I would have said me as of right now is slightly 70s inspired. So I love sort of like Bob Dylan, Rolling Stones um, and all that kind of uh, music that entails. Um, so yeah definitely I think it goes hand in hand with that 
Yeah, definitely. And um, I remember you saying that to me actually about the 1940s kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> that's so interesting. Um, what made you stop wear- dressing like that? Um, I think it was, uh, I just think it was a lot of work for me every day. I mean, I think you ask a lot of people that still dress it every day and I love it. And I, it's still, I have an infatuation with like the 1940s. Um, I just think it's the hair every day and I used to do it every day. And I remember sitting there and this was in my first year at university and I just sit there with my curlers and I do my pin curls and I, it just got too much. And I think through throughout university you sort of grow as a person you change you're, you're sort of growing up and and I think after all that I just sort of realized that it wasn't me so much anymore and it's not that it's a bad thing I'm just and I still wear the night I still collect the pieces um I just don't wear it every day yeah but yeah okay that's great so should we move <laughs> on to your first item then yeah and see what you've got and um, so the item that you love okay I got I've got this you might have seen it on my Instagram already. I've got this 1970s oh, that's so dress. Cool. Um, I don't know if you can see it. It's the most beautiful colours. And this I got at a charity shop um, not too far from me. And I think I paid, so it is actually belted. Um, yeah. I paid £3.50 for it. Oh my God, no way. And, and it's got the most beautiful little detailing as well. It's got these little open sleeves all the way down. <gasps> that's so nice. There. I love um, that. And I just think it's it's a really cool piece, but and it can be dated, but I think if you wear it, say, in London, and you wear, I don't know, a pair of white plinth soles and you sort of contemporise it, it can really work well in today's setting as well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think, yeah, definitely the 70s is my inspiration at the moment. <laughs> yeah, and I love anything with a high collar as well. It's really great. I think the definitely. 70s fashion is so cool. I think it's so fab. And the colours and stuff is is amazing. It's really nice. Um, so do you have any like favourite charity shops or ones that you like always go into? Um, British Heart Foundation are a really good one. Um, and I think what they do really well, um, and again by Nadis as well, um, is they tend to it, it looks quite clean and sometimes I feel like again why someone might not want to venture into a charity shop because there's a stigma or there used to be a stigma with second oh it's just smelly secondhand clothing and again I remember going to school when I was growing up and I someone used to call me um a charity shop girl but it was in a bad sort of tone yeah. um and I think from that I mean it, it obviously didn't deter me um and I think now it's become popular to yeah. have that secondhand clothing or go to the vintage store um even if that'll be um I don't know a higher class lady and she is like oh well it's vintage chanel so it's great and i'm really enjoying that secondhand is becoming more popular it's it's being essentially embodied um but yeah yeah so. yeah it's definitely changed i think since because i remember when i was growing up it wasn't really like a good thing either whereas yeah definitely over the years it's become cooler i remember in liverpool there was the oxfam there and then they had like an actual vintage section and that was really good as well um, but I find that, do you, do you find it difficult to shop online for vintage? Because I find it that can be quite hard sometimes. A hundred percent. I think, um, well, sizing has totally changed. I mean, you can buy something from, I don't know, 50s or 60s, but they've not long had a war. So the sizing would be totally, totally different to what we have now. I mean, I think I've seen a few YouTubers and they've gone and they've compared uh, I think it was Sarah Waste, actually, who compared her different Levi's sizings. Yeah. I mean, even with, I love vintage Levi's, but they are one of those things that you really have to just try on. It's worth going into a vintage shop and just trying on the different sizes because sizing in the 70s is not a current today size. Yeah. Definitely. And I also saw, like, Alexa Chung did something and she said that jeans aren't meant to be comfortable. She was saying that if you buy vintage jeans, she's like, you'll know that they, they aren't meant to be comfortable. They make yeah. you look amazing, but you will not be able to sit down. I was like, I've been doing it wrong, like looking for the comfortable pair yeah. of jeans. No, they do tend to really hold you in. They don't, I don't find they have, well, they didn't have as much stretch back then. It was like thick gold cotton, but they, they will last you for years. Mm, yeah. Um, yeah. Do Have you found that, because obviously you're wearing jeans today, have you found that your style has changed during lockdown at all? Do you feel like dressing up during the day or do you not? Like, 
what's your go-to at the moment uh i would say it's a bit of both so um it depends <laughs> depends how i feel in the morning mm. um a lot of the time i love putting my makeup on and just getting dressed as if i was going about a normal day just to to make it all seem normal um obviously i'm not going out or going anywhere so i think it really depends what i'm doing that d- doing during that day again with instagram if you dress up i always think well i'll take some photos or um yeah so i, I really do think it depends how i feel on the day um yeah have you been finding it easy to create content have you been like in the right mindset at the moment um i have on and off days some days i'm like yeah okay we're gonna take some photos and then you go outside and it turns gray mm. so do you know what i mean it really depends on again the weather and where i am it's I always prefer, I don't know why, take photos in a city, in front of buildings, that sort of atmosphere. But right now where I am, obviously, I'm in the middle of rural Kent countryside. So there's a lot of greenery going on. Um, but yeah, I think it's sort of, it's you make the best of what you have. Um, yeah. But yeah. That's what I've done as well. I've like, I never used to have any green in my feed because mm-hmm. it didn't look right. And then now that's it. it's like just green because I think you've just got to, you can only do what you can do, can't you? You've just got to use your, take your inspiration from where you are at the moment. <laughs> Definitely. So, but yeah, I think I'm the same as well. It depends how I feel, whether I want to get dressed up or not. But, because sometimes it does help. And then other, di- other days, it's nice to kind of like, feel like you're having a day off. Definitely. It's also good to kind of um, differentiate the days somehow, by whether you're wearing makeup or not. <laughs> Um, do you think, feel like your makeup and you said that your hair has changed because obviously you used to do the pink curls. Has your makeup changed very much like over the years or as you've got older? Um, yes and no. I'd say I'm eyeliner is one of those things for me. I think I mentioned when we met, many, I think it was the first time we had the meet up. I think we spoke about eyeliner <laughs> as how it was like our thing. We could yeah. not have eyeliner. Um, so eyeliner is definitely one of those things and the good old cat eye I do do that every day it's just one of those things that I can't get rid of I just think it just makes your eyes pop yeah um uh, if I'm having a really really off day I obviously won't do it um but then again like with isolation and things there's days where I think okay well I'm not going anywhere and the only thing I will be doing is probably going for a run or going for a walk so I won't wear anything Mm. and I think it's really good again to let you when with all this going on let your skin breathe definitely yeah give it a chance I'm the same with the eyeliner because I've, I've tried like that kind of just mascara and stuff, but I just mm-hmm. don't think it suits me as much. I think I definitely need like some eyeliner in there. Really. Definitely. <laughs> but yeah, I've that's worn... <laughs> um, I've worn less makeup over the years though, like on my mm-hmm. skin and stuff. I've toned it down a bit more. Um, so let's move on to the item that you find tricky or you don't like in your okay. wardrobe. I actually put this on my Instagram the other day and it's a military jacket. Oh, that, that's all cool. the buttons. Um, and I got this off Depop last week um, and it is Zara originally. Um, and I wouldn't, I don't know, I love it. And yeah. again, when I was envisioning this, I was thinking, oh, you know, it's very sort of Hendrix or like the Beatles, Sergeant Pepper, that kind of thing. And then as soon as I put it on and I went downstairs, my brother said to me, oh, do you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of My Chemical Romance. <laughs> and then, ever since then, I'm like, yeah, you know what, I see it. And then I can't think of how I'm going to style it. Yeah. Really. But... So, because <laughs> you don't want to look like you're about to go into war with it either. No. So what are you going to do with it? Do you think you're going to keep it? Um, I think I might have a look. See, Kate Moss, early Kate Moss, she did a lot of sort of that military inspired. Um, so I'm probably going to go more so down that route. So I'm thinking just like a pair of jeans, black loafers, um, maybe like a nice white shirt. Yeah. Just sort of smarten it up a little bit. Um, yeah, it's very tricky. Or even with like a printed midi, I think it looked really nice laid over the top of that with some, I don't know, white trainers or some boots. Um yeah, I really need to play around with that one because that's one that is, I feel like it's just going to stay there mm. and then I'll get around to it one day. <laughs> I think it's really cool. I think it would, I think it could definitely work. So do you find that when you've got something that is like more tricky to style, do you sort of wait for the moment or do you think, right, I'm just going to wear this and like kind of wear it in and get used to it? Um, I don't really, I don't really know. I just think for me every day, it's like, oh, today I'm going to be, 
this person today i want to be a little bit more you know 1940s or today we're going to go a little bit military uh, mm. don't really think i sort of pinpoint yeah yeah that sort of yeah i know what you mean <laughs> yeah <laughs> I think it's cool. Though. I think it would be nice with like the white shirt and the and the jeans and stuff. I think that would be cool. And um, is there anything that you've ever worn and you've thought, as you're wearing it, I'm never going to wear this again? Is there any? Um, not whilst I was wearing it, but there is definitely been times where I look back now and I think, why did I wear those? It was a pair of. I think it was quite fashionable at the time to wear Levi's cut off jeans. Now I didn't go. Like, they weren't really angled, if you know what I yeah. mean. Um, they were straight cut. But I just remember looking back and thinking now, why did you wear that? <laughs> and I used to wear, um, I had sort of like a 60s inspired top. And then I used to layer necklaces. So I had, um, I bought at a charity shop years ago, a necklace that had a bullet on the end of it. Yeah. And I don't know why I bought it. I just thought it was obviously kind of cool daisy um so I layered it with that and I just I look at that whole thing now and I think that's one to learn from daisy yeah. that's one to learn from Don't do that again <laughs> exactly has um, your style changed like much over say like the past year or do you do you feel like this is me this is who I'm gonna be I think this is definitely me I Again, I love the vintage, but I like the idea of incorporating it in more of a contemporary way. So um, using, mixing new pieces that I find from Depop that might have originated from, say, Zara or Topshop, and then combining them with the, the, no, no, the vintage maxi skirt. It's that kind of, I think, the play with the fashion and the different eras that I really enjoy. Yeah, and I think that's what we're lucky with now, is that we can just pick eras and and play with them all and stuff. I think that's really fun. Yeah, definitely. I was watching Little Women last night and they've got like all the puff sleeve dresses and oh, I definitely feel like it. that is kind of mm -hmm. because of that film that kind of come back and crept its way a little bit. Obviously not that extreme, but I can definitely see it in some of the silhouettes now that they do kind of almost look quite Victorian in a way. Is it Victorian Little Women? Like Victorian, Edwardian, yeah. yeah, definitely. I'm not very good with history. I'm not. No. <laughs> I'm not a history buff. So I'm like, but yeah. that's that's what we're saying. Everything comes back. So I don't know things that your mum had when she was I don't know growing up, but probably come back round. You know, like the suede jackets they probably had in the seventies. My mum quite often says to me, "Oh, I dressed like you when I was younger." Yeah. So my yeah, mum always it's said crazy. That. <laughs> and um, because I would always like to. Do you find that you? keep a lot of your stuff or do you are you good at selling it on i do a lot of selling on i feel like i love clothes and i my this has always been my argument with fast fashion and everything i love shopping i do and like hands up in the air i'll admit that so my way of combating it is one i'm not shopping in say the top shops or the zara's i am going about it the more sustainable route and then again if i find that there's something that i haven't worn for a while i'll sell it on so i feel like that's again the fun thing about sustainable and buying second hand is that there is a const you can have somewhat of a constant rotation with it um and again quality is just so much better if i always find if i'm buying vintage from the 70s or i don't know a suede jacket or those vintage levi's they're going to last me a good few years in the future as well so yeah. yeah do you alter clothes in any way yourself would you would you think of doing that or do you want to definitely okay. sometimes i i actually picked up this dress to show you so i've got this um it's like a crepe, and if you can see, it's 1940s, oh, yeah, so it's so nice. it's very. It reminds me of Rick. So sorry, I've got to be able to close again. Okay. Um, in the cut of it, and again, this is too big for me, so I would slightly take this in on the sides. But again, that's the thing. I think I spent something like again three pound. It, it was actually this one was a fiver. Um, I don't spend a lot on it, so you can if you wanted to. I don't know, get a pair of Levi's and get them adjusted. You have the extra money. And the leeway to do that because you haven't spent a lot on them yeah. that's always been my view on that yeah and seeing it as more as more as an investment definitely it's such a difference isn't it I've, I've noticed if you buy stuff that, or you have things that are more expensive it's the fit that just makes it and um definitely. that makes you like definitely keep it longer because it fits you so well and it's the cheap pieces where you're like oh well it doesn't matter i just i yeah. just wear it anyway and then, it's like throwaway fashion yeah yeah, it's hard. 
So I think I would love to keep more clothes, but I just don't mm-hmm. have the space. So yeah, have to kind of get rid of stuff because, and especially living in London and stuff, it's like. <laughs> so, yeah, no, I know what you mean. So when you're when you say that you're like a stylist, mm-hmm. um, hi, obviously you're really good at dressing yourself. How do you start like dressing someone else or? How do you? Uh, how would you go about that? I usually sort of. Um, you obviously have a chit chat with the customer. You usually get to know what they're sort of looking for if they're going to an event. Sort of establish that. Um, again, what sort of kind of colours, what kind of fits they usually tend to go for, and it's always good to sort of put them in something that they wouldn't usually go for. A lot of the time, I usually say, "I'll oh, try this on," and they go, mm, and then they come out and they go, "Yeah, I really like this. I really, really like the way that this fits." And I think it's just being able to see something in someone else that they can't sort of see in themselves. Mm-hmm. So a certain colour, say for a woman who doesn't really like colours and she puts on a scarlet red dress and it just, you know, it makes her come alive, essentially. I think that's one of the really fun parts of it. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's usually how I think I'd go about it, considering all sort of like those elements. And is there anything that you find for yourself that is definitely a no-no? Like, is there any colour or any kind of item um, yellow usually is one that i find hard uh, if it's for me it has to be a brighter shade of yellow if i go into the sort of lighter yellows my mum is quite an honest person as much as i love her <laughs> she will she will say to me she'll say mm, Stacey, mm, i'm not sure on that color on you so i think because i fell in love with um an edwardian style blouse on depop for years ago and i remember buying it and then I remember taking it out of the bag and trying it on. And, and in my face, I was like, I think this works. And then she sort of solidified <laughs> that it didn't. <laughs> I find yellow really tricky as well. And um, I bought this um, dress once and it was like a puffy kind of like floaty yellow maxi dress. And I put it on and I just looked like a meringue. And it's so <laughs> sad because I loved it, but I was like, the colour just was all wrong. Yeah. So I don't know what it is about yellow, but I think it's I think it's a really tough colour to, to style, definitely. It's not an easy one. <laughs> um, so should we move on to your random item? Yeah, uh, I this isn't fashion orientated. This no, that's is, fine. I really struggle on this one, but I was like, what do I have in my room that's probably a bit random and someone else might not have in their room? Um, <laughs> exactly. And it's really random. I have sort of, I don't know if you call it taxidermy, but I have this moth that oh. I picked up. This is really random. This is really odd. No, I'm but, um, glad you've... I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's really big. Um, and I got this in France last year. I paid only like a euro for it. Um, but I really like it. It's sort of... With my sort of like... Um, like the marikame um, and all that kind of... The woven handbags. I think it sort of looks really nice and really pretty. Um, yeah, it's really pretty. I love it. It's so again, nice. Yeah, very random. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, your room's decorated really nicely. Um, so do you sort of, did you do that over time? So it's, do you pick up bits or did you kind of go out and just think, right, I need to do it all, all at once? It's definitely um, bit by bit. I, I think anyone will tell you, if if they like charity shops, people always say to me, um, you know, oh, why do you always get all these good bits, blah, blah, blah. How do you get these bits? I'm, 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 I'm on it a lot. Like uh, if I'm going around the church, or if I have like, I, I work in a city, so on my break, if I don't really know what to do, I'll just think, oh, I'll just have me try the charity shops. Um, and so it, it is a case of, I don't always go into a church shop or say Depop and buy something, um, but it is about sort of persevering with it. And when you do persevere, I think that's when those things come about. So um, obviously when I look to move, I'll start making up a box of things and I'll add things in here and there and pick them up on the way. Um, <laughs> how are you finding it with your family and everything? Are you, get, you all getting on okay? Yeah, I think that I love my family. We get on really well, so there's never usually any problems. Obviously, we always have qualms. We always have problems. Um, but yeah, I just think it's... I think we consider ourselves lucky in the situation that we're in. So um, we've all sort of been furloughed at the moment. So we're all together. So it just... It's, it's sort of peace of mind in some ways um, mm. for all of us. So I think we're just trying to yeah. mull along and see see what happens with us, really. I think that's the case of all of us. Mm. It, yeah. It's you and your brother, isn't it? It is. He, he's at home. Yeah. And is he into fashion in the same way at all? He is. He is more... How do I describe, how do I describe my brother's style? Mm-hmm. He's more, I'm going to say... He really likes 1970s again. He's big on his music. 
Um, at the moment, he's into sort of um, 70s hiking gear and um, cyclists um, and that sort of style. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the film uh, Call Me By Your Name. Yeah. Um, the lead, I can't remember what his name is, one of the lead guys in it. It's very much that sort of style. Um, yeah. But yeah, he's just, he never used to be. I remember it's like when you grow up and you go through your teenage phase and he had hair down to here because he just didn't want to cut it and he'd just chuck on any old T-shirt. And then, yeah, but now he's very, he likes to be very particular about the, the way he dresses. Um, mm. But yeah, he it's funny because we all sort of have our own um, things. So I'm the clothes. My mum is the sort of the antique bits. My dad collects old toy cars and he really likes his vehicles and cars in general uh-huh. um and then my brother used to collect world war ii memorabilia so wow. we were a family of collectors essentially um but yeah, yeah so it's it's funny how over time people change and yeah we all change yeah do you um do you try and influence his style in any way have you ever tried to like give him a makeover or anything <sighs> no no <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think I would attempt. There was there is one uh, time I remember saying to him he was talking about getting highlights. It was when um, <laughs> the film Drive came out and Ryan Gosling and he had the oh, Scorpion yeah. jacket and he's like that's cool <laughs> and he's talking about going blonder and I said well L'Oreal do this little gel you should try that. So ever <laughs> since I introduced him to that that's what he's used. Oh, so, I'm telling him. I'm telling everyone all of his secrets now. <laughs> yeah, he'll be he'll be absolutely fuming at you. Yeah. Like, you sold YouTube about his highlights. <laughs> oh, I think yeah. it's good though. It's nice. I think, um, yeah, men seem to be just more open about that kind of thing anyway, which is really good. I think it's great that he, again, sort of, we've always grown up in charity shops, but at school, Charlie, my brother, wasn't into it so much. And now he really enjoys, it's something that we can do together. So if we're going to go into town, we'll go and we'll have a wander around together. And I remember people have always said, especially guys, there's not as much for guys in charity shops. And I think that's because men tend to hold on to their clothes a lot more. Mm. Whereas I don't know if it's a cliche women's thing. We like to have a bit more of a turnover, but. Yeah. And we, and we tend to like have more, I think as well. I think we, we tend to shop more, which mm. I think as well as, um, interesting about like obviously there's kind of like a pressure now to sort of not show off about how much you've bought I don't know if you feel that at all Mm -hmm. and I think it's kind of like on it's like pinpointed on women it seems like another thing for someone to ever go a woman for is like oh well shopping is bad we've decided it's really bad now so yeah you know I think that's really tough I know people have said to me before oh you know it always seems like you're always buying and again i might be buying but i'm always selling i think that's what people don't see with me especially is that i have my depop is like my main runner so i use that as like a separate so the money that i make off my depop well if i wanted to treat myself to something new to put on my instagram then the money's come from that and it's not just coming from the money that i'm making when i'm working or do you know what i mean and that's the way i like to think about it as well um i'm not just constantly just buying 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 I'm also selling and again that's what I said before it's that sort of turnover of clothes that I really enjoy yeah so do you feel any pressure to sort of have something new for an event or just for every day do you feel that pressure of like having a new outfit definitely sometimes I think um it was more so at university you sort of think oh I'm going out I'm going out Friday so you know get a nice jean you know jeans and a nice top kind of situation um but not so much now I think it's nice to work with what you've got um and I have do you know what I mean I have a lot of things I just don't I think it's putting them in the right situation so you might have a dress that you might have to accessorize a bit but it could work for say more of a formal event do you know what I mean I think it's working with what you've got yeah Um, yeah I think mm -hmm. I'm getting better because doing Instagram as well I think that's that's tough because you always feel like you kind of have to have something else to to show especially now that we're in the same Mm. situation and you know we we can't go out to London to shoot an outfit so it doesn't look different it's going to be the same dress in the same place have you struggled with that at all um sometimes um again like well I like shooting in sort of more city atmospheres and styling um but again it's like you said it's having with with Instagramers, I think 
you do always have to have something new because that works with exciting content. You have to have that sort of um, the new products or the new, do you see where I'm going? It's mm. sort of, yeah. I'm trying to think of the way to sort of, <laughs> to, to say it. Um, but the way that's, again, that's one of the reasons why I started the Instagram is I have all these things that I sort of, I, I wish I'd always documented or like, do you remember that Ganny top that I got a few years ago? Well, now, now I can see that I've got it on my Instagram and it's the way that I document it and then I sell it on and then I might buy something else. Um, yeah. So that's, yeah. And have you ever got any, um, stick, maybe sticks a bit of too harsh a word to mm-hmm. use, but have you ever had any stick for, uh, starting instagram or taking pictures of your outfits and yourself as anyone no i haven't had any negative as of yet um i think for me it's a confidence thing i'd really like to get on there and start talking um but again you know when i like when people do hauls and things like that a lot of the time when i do go to the charity shops i I might pick up a few things i think oh you know maybe i should do a haul and then i kind of put it off because i know it's my self-confidence sort of saying well, he's going to want to listen to you or, you know, yeah. it's just a tough one, but I'm going to, it's going to happen. <laughs> oh my gosh, you definitely should. I, I find that as well. I always get that kind of feeling. You're like, oh, well, who, who cares what, what I have to say? And then like, just trying not to think. There's a couple of people I find that I, if I thought about them listening to what I was saying, then that really puts me off. That's exact. That's exactly it. And I've but I've actually had a few people from school um, that I haven't spoken to in years that have come back to me recently and said, you know, what do you do? It all seems really interesting. So, it, if anything, it's been more positive. It's, I think it's just, you know, not listening to your brain and not listening to that negative mindset of thinking. Actually, hang on a sec, Daisy. We're rocking this. Like, yeah. Come on. Like, yeah. it's trusting yourself a little bit more. I think. Yeah, I think you're doing really well. And I think you should <laughs> definitely get talking on instagram do it um so should we finish off with your style icon then yeah um i it's hard it was, it was really hard for me to pick one i didn't want to be cliche but it's definitely got to be jane birkin i yeah. just think again she embodies that sort of french style though she wasn't french she embodies that sort of oh just classic and again effortless of just sort of oh you know i've thrown on a pair of dungarees and a white blouse and it just looks great um and I'd say one of my another inspirations would definitely it's just the past in general I'm always inspired by the past whether it be like I said through film through music um yeah just I just the part I think it like I said everything comes back and I think we have so much to learn from the past most designers take a lot of inspiration from the past um, you know, like with the whole Brodeur Anglaise with Zara, we always see a lot of that mm. in summertime, and that's inspired from like the um, Edwardian like lawn dresses and and all that kind of stuff. And I just, I think that's really exciting seeing it all, yeah, you know, come back around. What do you think of the the nineties and like the early two thousands sort of coming back now? How do you feel about that kind of style? Mm, I like it. I love um, Sex and the City. So I've recently yeah. just finished that whole thing again. I. Now I'm like, I don't really know what to do. But I love the way she sort of styles it. Um, but from what I remember, when I was growing up, it was like hair gems and like roll-on glitter. And uh, the, the one that I remember wasn't so great. So I'm not sure I'd want to bring it back. Yeah. But if we're doing, you know, Sex in the City. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> but then again, I see some people on Instagram that look absolutely amazing um, I just think for me, it's it's the past prior to my existence, maybe, that I find a bit more interesting. Yeah, me too. I definitely feel that. And like, I don't really like low rise jeans or low rise oh. trousers. Oh, no. Just, <laughs> not for me at all. Like, no. <laughs> that's not part of the bit of my body that I want to show off at all. <laughs> no. I love high waist. You just feel like you secure you're good to go you're ready for the day i just i can't no yeah. it just feels odd yeah that's what i like about high waisted as well just like all tucked in it's all neat mm-hmm. but my dad came into the kitchen the other day and he was like i've got to ask you i was like what? and he goes why do you always have like the front of your jumper like tucked into your trousers and then he did it and he was like because it looks really odd and i was like 
well yeah i knew it looked really odd i'm like yeah. i don't i'm like i don't really know why i don't know if maybe it's just because it's like that's where your waist is it's like showing mm. off your shape but there's some things that i just can't imagine not not doing like ways that i've styled and my boyfriend is very much like he likes his trousers to touch his shoes Mm-hmm. And I love to have like my ankles on show. I can't really imagine having jeans that are like full length anymore. And it's stuff like that that I think makes things very modern and like very now. Yeah. It's like those little things that we don't even think about that we just do off the cuff. Definitely. I think it's, really... I think it's called a French tuck, isn't it? Is it? I think I remember seeing it on Queer Eye. Tan France. That's what he always does. He tucks it in at the front and then has it hanging at the back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's what i've got it i've got it now my jumper's like tucked into my (laughs) into my trousers (laughs) and so what are your plans for the rest of your day then have you got anything exciting Um, happening not a lot i'm probably i've got a run plan this evening but that's quite literally it's funny because i know i've seen a lot of people saying they just feel the need to gorge but i i feel like the opposite i feel like i'm quite a bit anxious with it all with everything going on i just don't feel the need to eat and then i think to myself well you've been sat you've been sat at home all day so you need to kind of get out and get your exercise so i find it it's like mm. the opposite of what everyone else is like my mum's has been baking a lot um yeah, yeah. so yeah because i like ba- i love baking but then i don't necessarily want to eat it all so i'm kind of like feeding it off to my parents and my boyfriend and stuff because yeah. i love the act of of doing it but then i think once you've made something it's almost like you're kind of like sick of it already you feel mm-hmm. like you've already consumed it. Do you find that you're like dressing up to go to the shops? Like it's your one chance. <laughs> uh, sometimes it depends. Again, if I've if I'm not wearing any makeup, I'll just think, oh no, it's all good, doesn't matter. But if I've dressed up to take some pictures, then I will just go as I am. So yeah, yeah. sometimes maybe I do do look a bit overdressed. <laughs> I, I think it's more for when I go for a walk. I'm like, okay, I just put this really nice dress on to go for a walk. Yeah, that's um, how I feel. i also feel like we're kind of living in the past because this is what people would have done isn't it for like entertainment and stuff it's like definitely they wouldn't have had all the massive distraction of the outside world so we're getting back to like doing really humble things which is kind of like a positive thing but apart from this it's definitely 2020 like interviewing people on on facetime yeah (laughs) but it's been really good though thank you so much for coming on here and i'll see you soon yeah take care Bye. bye